It's June 23rd, 1993. Jurassic Park is breaking box office records. Janet Jackson is cutting it up on the billboard charts, and Lorena Bobbitt is chopping off her sleeping husband's <laughs> This is the 1990s. Totally scandalous. Hey guys, I'm Tracy Stump, and this is the show where we pair all of my favorite things, true crime, the 90s, and a celebrity who lived through it all. One of the most notorious events in the 90s occurred on a summer night in Virginia where a 24-year-old named Lorena Bobbitt made housewife history with the help of a 12-inch knife. We're getting into it with one of the biggest badasses of all time, Xena the Warrior Princess, Lucy Lawless. <laughs> You portrayed one of the most iconic, powerful women on television. What's your take on this whole case? Was there something in the air, something in the ether about women with swords taking the fight to men? I don't know. In 1988, a Marine named John Bobbitt meets a manicurist from Ecuador named Lorena, and they fall in love get married, but after the wedding, according to Lorena, she was subjected to unimaginable treatment like abuse, infidelity, sexual assault, and even a forced abortion. But after four long years, Lorena strikes back. Do you remember where you were when you found out about this case? I was doing the first Hercules movies in New Zealand, and it was everywhere. That was yeah. huge news, and that transmitted across the world loud and clear. People were obsessed. Like, what do you think it is? What are the components? It comes down to some deep-seated rage. It really happened. It's horrifying. Every element of it is horrifying. So it goes down like this. After a night of bar hopping, John allegedly rapes Lorena. Moments after he falls asleep, Lorena goes to the kitchen and the light of the refrigerator illuminates something that could put her at ease forever. It's a 12 inch knife. So she grabs it, slips back into the bedroom, and slash gives John's shaft the shaft. She drives off, knife in one hand, penis in the other. How she drove the car is beyond me, but Lorena then chucks the dismembered member into a field next to a convenience store. Could you imagine just being like that lone guy walking his dog in that field and just a car drives by and just flings something at you? You think it's like some form of like fast food wrapper, but it's not. Back at the house with bloody sheets and zero trace of a penis underneath, John Bobbitt wasn't having a nightmare, he was living one. And good news for him, his drinking buddy Robert Johnson was spending the night and he took him to the hospital. So John arrives at the hospital and is seen by a doctor who's pretty confident that they can reattach John's Johnson. This was the first time this had ever been yeah. done, so some dude was like, you get me that willy and I can do it. Like, it was Apollo 13. But there is one problem. Where's John's penis? Police are about to call an APB on John's genitalia, but before they have the chance to, they hear from Lorena. What I remember most clearly was the spotlight on dark ground going across as these sheriffs in the early morning were looking for this little detached penis in the dust, man. I was imagining somebody getting out and heroically picking it up and like blowing it off. <laughs> Authorities track his down and deliver it in a Ziploc bag to the hospital and John's nine and a half hour reattachment surgery begins. And guess what? It worked! So you were pretty relieved when it got reattached. What a gift to womankind to have that guy back in operation. And a story, right? Wrong. The story is a media sensation and becomes one of the biggest headlines of the decade. The entire world is watching as Lorena and John both go to trial. First, John goes to trial for raping Lorena, and the verdict is not guilty. He's actually acquitted of all charges. And then, two months later, it's Lorena's turn. She's on trial for malicious wounding, which could land her 20 years in prison. Lorena claims temporary insanity due to years of abuse, and John just denies he did it. He says she violently reacted to their impending divorce, which would have revoked her green card. She wasn't a citizen, so she needed him to stay in the country. So I don't know if we can like test her morals that way because she she would be uh, deported without him. I know that that is a reality that a lot of women feel economically trapped. Yeah. Because they are most often the primary caregivers 
and we don't pay for that in our yeah. society. I'm a huge yeah. fan of divorce for the right people, you know, and I wish that she had had that option. At the trial, we learned all the intimate details of their relationship, including the fact that John was a selfish lover and never waited for her to orgasm. In her mind, it was his penis from which she could not escape. Everything about this case is crazy. When Lorena takes the stand, it's riveting. She talks about going to the hospital with bruises and pretending she's falling down, hiding behind locked doors. He forced himself into me. It hurt me. <laughs> this is a terrible existence for her. What underpins this is very, very serious issues about spousal abuse, about a lack of freedom and inability to leave for a lot of women. And the whole world eagerly awaits to hear if she's found guilty. In January 1994, Lorena was acquitted of all criminal charges and just like that, both of them off the hook and back into the wild. John continued to be a wild man for many years to come. Ironically, he performed in a band called The Severed Parts and he appeared in two adult films, one called Franken Penis and the other Uncut. Ooh. I cannot believe that he was able to find partners to sign up for porn. Talk about women who like need to go to therapy. Lorena used her infamy for good and started an organization to help domestic violence victims. Was Lorena Bobbitt a hero? No, you can't say that was heroic, but it just shows what um, happens to a human being's psyche when they feel trapped. And that's the silver lining. This was an atrocity from all ends, but at least it put domestic violence on the map. Do you think if this would have happened today, it would have been portrayed differently? There'd probably be less surprise if it happened today because they, you've got a lot of very powerful women saying, yep, happened to me too. There were a lot of people who failed to educate that girl that she is worth more, that she does not get hit even once that you don't stay with somebody who beats you. No, you get out long before. You don't put up with it even once.